Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and this uh, new tutorial on advanced Python. So in previous few videos, we covered about uh, um, basic concept of uh, object oriented programming in Python. And with this video, we will start about uh, multi-threading and multi-processing. So to go ahead in multi-threading and understanding concepts, let us try to understand some uh, simple definitions. So what is program? Program is simply a executable, uh, an executable file. For example, this uh, multi-threading basics.py is a program. And the process is simply a program that has been loaded into memory along with all the resources it requires to run it. Okay. And thread is simply a unit of execution within a process. So a process can have multi-threads in that sense. And uh, that's what we will learn in this video. And multi-threading is the concept of like spawning multiple uh, threads within a, the same process, okay? And uh, for each thread, it contains its own register set as well as local variables. And all threads of a process share the global variables and the program itself, okay? That's how it works. To understand the threading uh, multi threading better uh, we need to understand uh, the io bound and cpu bound tasks in python also um, the global interpreter log which is also known as gil okay so io bound uh, tasks are uh, those where it doesn't need much cpu compute okay whereas cpu bound tasks require a uh, uh, CPU uh, compute a lot in that sense. Okay, so IO bound tasks include web scraping, database calls, reading and writing files, and so on. Whereas CPU bounds they push the CPU compute to limit, like mathematical computation, matrix multiplication, searching, image processing, data processing, and so on. Okay, and the Python global interpreter lock is a, also known as GIL is a log that allows only one thread to hold the control of the interpreter okay we will learn that how it uh, plays and uh, plays a role uh, in multi threading and also we will see like uh, how to solve that okay so let us dive in and create some example uh, like how we can understand multi threading and how uh, to use it in that sense and more specifically where to use it okay so let us see so let us create uh, uh, two functions uh, one is uh, uh, that will be io bound and the other one will be cpu bound okay so let us define first the io bound so and let us call second as a argument and let us say um so io bound is simply let us uh, make it sleep okay so in IO bound, uh, it doesn't use the CPU compute in that sense. So we will simply use sleep method. Okay. To sleep it for that much of time. Okay. We can also get the process ID using uh, OS. Let us import that as well. OS dot get PID. Okay. We can also get the thread, uh, what is the thread and what is the process. So we can also say like current thread is equal to, we need to use current thread method from threading. And we can also say current process that we will be taking from multiprocessing. we can simply add dot name dot name okay now we can simply print it print f we can say pid with thread Current thread with process current process 
started okay and let us copy the same thing again and print at the end and let us call it completed okay now let us uh, call it in our main body of the code so we can simply say if we can simply type main it will suggest us so we can simply say start so we will uh, get what time it takes so we can simply use the time function uh, time module and simply say time dot time okay that will be start and we can simply say print f the time taken is equal to time dot time we simply reduce minus the start time okay now in between let us call io bound two times so let us say second is equal to five seconds okay and let us call io bound with second and let us call it again okay now let us see how much time it takes so let us run and see it So main thread is started, main process is started, and it completed, and then it again started. So it took around 10 seconds. Okay. It is simply like uh, we are waiting 5 seconds each. Okay. Now let us use multi threading to uh, improve the processing time in that sense. Okay. So let us say we have T1 is equal to, so we need to use a thread from multi threading. And there are many uh, arguments, but uh, the main one is uh, target where we pass the function name, what we want to, and there should not be any parenthesis. And then the second one is arguments, okay? And it should be always a tuple. So we can simply pass a second and simply uh, add a comma here. And again, we simply copy it and we say T2, okay? So for each thread, we need to. Uh, start it first okay and also we need to say t2 dot start and again we need to wait okay using join so let us now see how much time it takes so it took like 10 seconds now if we run with multi-threading it should uh, do uh, things in uh, concurrent manner okay so there are two things uh, are two terms which are kind of used uh, interchangeably but that's not correct so concurrent is like both of them running concurrently whereas parallel is a different thing which is multi-processing in that sense so threading multi-threading is concurrent processing whereas multi-processing is a uh, parallel uh, computing in that sense okay so just uh, to be a bit uh, careful with the terms what uh, we are using in that sense so let us run and see uh, how much time it will take now so see like both of them started at the same time because we are using multi-threading in that sense and both of them finished uh, at the same time and it took around uh, five seconds only which is like half of the time in that sense okay now let us create another uh, method or uh, another function in that sense that will be cpu bound so we will simply take a number and uh, decrease it okay so we can say cpu bound and let us say we have n and instead of sleep let us say while n n minus is equal to one so until n is zero it will be true and it will keep decreasing it as soon as it will be zero it will terminate it okay now let us say we have a number is equal to let us uh, use a very big number okay so that it will run some time let us now call this method in that sense sorry this function so method is kind of when a function is within the class and uh, function is when it is a uh, um, outside uh, class in that sense so that's kind of a general terminology 
that uh, is used in that sense okay okay so let us uh, call the function so we can call uh, um cpu bound and we can simply pass num and we will call again so we will we are calling it two times okay now let us run and see how much time it takes so it is started and that is finished it is started again and it has finished so it took around 15 seconds to execute them when we are running them in a uh, like sequential manner now if we run uh, multi threading on top of that so as it is the cpu bound in general it won't help in that sense okay so now let us pass here uh, cpu bound cpu bound and let us pass here now okay let us run and see it again so earlier it took 15 seconds now here uh, both of them started and uh, let us see how much time it takes in that sense so you see it took around approximately the same time as when we were running it uh, sequentially so that's uh, where this um, gil comes into picture so here as the process is a uh, cpu bound the gil doesn't allow a process to run in a concurrent manner okay so it allows first one to complete it and then it allows the second one to run in a sequence so just remember that whenever a process is uh, uh, io bound it's uh, better to use multi threading in that sense it will improve the performance as many threads we spawn for example if you are scrapping the data if you are writing to a file you have a like huge number of files to write and so on it's better to use multi threading but if you have a process which is kind of a, a multi uh, which is actually cpu bound just always use multi processing that we will discuss in the next video of course so i think it should be clear like what is cpu bound process and what is io bound and what is multi threading in that sense in python and where to use it okay so uh, in this video we will stop here and in the next video we will talk about multi processing okay so thanks for watching bye for now take care see you in the next